Well, we've come off of the big uh, season of Resurrection Sunday, and I uh, hope you guys feel like it was a worthwhile uh, celebration of our Lord raising from the dead, rising from the dead. What a, what a build-up it is, isn't it? Seems like uh, we move everything now again towards that moment next year. But what do we do now after the Sunday after? It's like, what, what do you do now? Where, where do you head? What do you, what do you want to talk about? You know, what, what does the Lord want to do? And, and I love how the Gospels help us, give us a, a good direction on what happens next for us. And uh, we're going to be in John chapter 21. And uh, we're going to move along in the, the timeline of what is happening after the resurrection. Because there's some important things happening here that will give us direction going forward for the rest of this year as well. And uh, one of those things that we are going to build up to is, anybody know? Pentecost! Pentecost is coming. Um, I, I'm sad sometimes because Pentecost doesn't always get the needed, I don't know what's word, the needed focus that it, it really needs. It is, it is the coming of the filling of the Spirit in our lives. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty big deal. And uh, a lot of the church in uh, the Protestant area just kind of, oh, yeah, it comes and it goes, you know. Some years it's important, some years maybe not. But it is a big deal. And it's a continuation of what the resurrection is. The resurrection has brought life to us. Now we journey to the filling of that complete life in the Spirit. So we can make a difference. So we can be used completely. By God. It, it makes us whole, if you will. And so we journey. Now, Pentecost is 50 days after Easter or after Resurrection Sunday. So we count it out 50 days, which uh, the, the Pentecost Sunday will fall on June 8th this year. And uh, so that's what we're going to kind of be building up to. That June 8th, and uh, unfortunately I won't be here for Pentecost Sunday, but uh, Tressa will be doing Pentecost Sunday. But, but we're going to be journeying these 50 days together. And I want us to journey in a very special way this year because we have some big things that the Lord has just really opened up for us. And I just want to share with you. We have been talking about our direction and what we want to do, right? Uh, we, we've set goals this year, and we've talked about communication, and we've talked about, you know, our curb appeal, and then some other things, the chamber partnership. But I want us to really talk about number five here, center on prayer, because I want us to take a challenge in these 50 days. Now, granted, we're a week behind, so, so. 43. 43, thank you. Okay. So I want us to take, from now until Pentecost, an opportunity for each one of us to commit to prayer. But I want us to commit to prayer in a very, very specific way. Yesterday, I was uh, out uh, putting a new uh, light fixture on the outside of the building out here because I found a really cool one, and of course at Restore, and I thought, oh, this would be great on the outside of that door, and so I'm... I'm in the process of doing that, and I, I go to the garage to grab a few tools, and I come back out, and as I'm walking down the sidewalk, I, I look across the street, and the Reno family is out there unloading stuff, and it was very evident, the Lord said, now is the time, and so I walked straight over there. And I introduced myself. I said, hey, I apologize that I haven't introduced myself before. And we had a great conversation. 
And out of that conversation, we talked about the property adjacent. And I just simply asked, I said, would you be interested in helping us with the future and looking at selling that property? Miss Reno Denise said, for the first time, I'm excited about who to sell this property to. And that will be to you guys. I don't know about you, but that is a huge door that the Lord is opening up. Now, to go along with that, this week I also sent off an email to our district superintendent just kind of, you know, just rejoicing in what God has done and blessing us and uh, just kind of wanting to encourage him in their time. They've been going through a real rough valley, if you will, in their own lives with the passing of their daughter and, and just some really difficult stuff. And I just wanted to encourage him that, you know, the Lord's doing something here. And as a district superintendent, he, he should just have a piece about what God is doing here. I did uh, ask him, I said, you know, is there an opportunity that if we get a chance, and this was before I went over there and talked. And I just said, would, would there be an ability for the district to help us financially secure that property if it arrives? And he sent me back an email and says the district would, would very much like to help us financially in securing that property. So I don't know about you, but uh, doors open and pieces come together when God's timing comes. And so I've been thinking about, you know, this is just good, good stuff. But it's in times like this that we can't just rush into things. We need to take the time to make sure we're listening. Because it's too easy to say, all right, let's just rush through the door and, and go and forget to still listen to what God's doing. So my challenge to us is that, uh, and, and next week I'll have, I'll have it all printed out because it really kind of came to me yesterday as I was kind of mulling over, you know, how do, we, how do we all engage in this process? And here's how I want us to engage is, I want everybody, I want you to think about a day, a day in the week, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever it is. But you would take that day, and that would be your day, and if more than one, take one day, that's fine because there's more than seven here, obviously. That you would take that day and commit to prayer and, and asking and, and praying about the purchase of this property. And from now till Pentecost, every day on that day, that's your day to pray, you will come before God and say, Lord, what do we need to know? Lord, What's our next step? Lord, would you open more doors? Lord, would you make it possible? Lord, would you give us a future? I mean, there's a whole lot of things you could be praying about, but that's going to be your day for the next 50 days, every day. And I want to, I want to create a list back there so, so we could all put our names on the days, make sure it's all covered. But from now to Pentecost, we're all praying in one specific direction about this property. I did learn that it is three city lots that are over there. They did ask, and then well, I mean, we're all kind of on the same page. They said, well, you know, our biggest concern is, you know, not allowing the, the bar over there to use it as a parking lot and, and as a place for them to congregate. And, and I said, well, we're, we're there with you. You know, we don't, we don't want that hassle either in that sense. And, uh, but I just, I just can't get away from that image of her smiling and saying for the first time I'm happy to be able to, to, to sell it to you guys. I mean they've had lots of offers they said on the property. One guy was going to try to build apartments over there. Um, there have been other offers to them but they just haven't been real excited about any of those offers. And so it's just God's leading. So hopefully that will kind of develop and move forward. So leading into that, uh,
prayer is going to be a very important part of us making those kind of steps. And we need to all commit to it, not just one or two. But it's the time for us all to engage. And tonight in our planning meeting, we're going to spend a little time in prayer on that area. But we're going to be talking and planning. Um, when we make those steps, I, I'm a firm believer, we have to already be thinking about what we're going to be doing with those things that God opens up and offers to us. Um, you know, just like when we when we did the downstairs for kids, you know, and it was just my two kids. We knew that in the future God was going to bring kids. We've been praying about it, but we need to have it set up for it. We needed to be prepared for when God said, here it is. We, we had an opportunity to seize it. We didn't have to scramble around reacting to what was coming. Does that make sense? Amen. So, so tonight, uh, the planning meeting, we'll talk more about that and, and be, uh, be in prayer about that. So be thinking about uh, your day. Commit this week to that day as well. It doesn't have to be written on the paper for you to commit to that. So be thinking about what day you want to set aside in prayer uh, for the purchase of the property and uh, in the future where we're headed. So in light of that, um, have you ever been stuck? I remember in Pablo, Montana, there's a gentleman by the name of Sam in the church. And I know, Mom, you remember Sam Hoosier. Oh, is it? Yeah. And uh, he was your typical, you know, high school senior who, you know, just uh, thought the whole world was around him. And, you know, he just... He just did things his own way, you know, just like typical seniors do. They want to just get out and be their own world, be their own person, you know, get out from under mom and dad, you know, those kind of things. And, and I remember uh, he'd asked uh, my brother and I to get this really cool truck, of course, and uh, he's like, hey, let's go out mudding. And so we decided to go out mudding with him. And, and there was this uh, rock pit area that was a uh, just kind of a known place to go but you know get get your truck nice and dirty right well the night before it rained like it did here i mean just pour and so we had lots of mud and a lot of water to have a lot of fun with and i mean we're plowing through these big mud puddles and i mean you know it's a lot of water because when it rushes over the top of your cab and and for that split second you're like we can't see anything because all this muddy water coming over us, you know. I mean, we are it's so much fun. It's just a blast, you know. And then you get out and you look how muddy your truck is and you're, you're, you feel proud. <laughs> well, I remember we were kind of bobbing up and down in this uh, bog area and then we come over this, uh, this little hill and then we see this huge puddle. We're like, whoa, that's cool. So we all kind of talked about it. We thought, well, okay, let, do we want to attempt it? Oh yeah, let, let's try it. Let's let's try it. And so Sam decided, well, let's let's test it a little bit first before we really just plunge right in it. So I think for a moment there in his 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 adolescent year, he had a he had a moment of clarity for just a split second. And uh, so we, we decided to go ahead and ease into it a little bit. So he eased into it, and, and it was all okay. So we went a little bit further, and, and it was all okay. And, and then and then he decided, okay, let, let's let's you know, let's go in a little bit deeper. And then all of a sudden, the front end just goes, whoosh, and the water starts pouring in from the cab. And, and I mean, we're sitting, we're sitting in water now, and it's just the water just it just came in and leveled up to where we were sitting, and we're like, oh no, we're, 
we're in trouble. <laughs> and so we, we crawl out the windows, because you know, when you have that much water pushing in on the doors, you can't open those doors. I mean, it is really, really hard to push open doors. So we rolled down the windows and climbed out, got on the back, and, and we're like, oh, crud, what are we going to do? We were stuck. And so we walked back out of well, those a couple miles and finally we got we flagged down this truck and and he was actually a farmer who lived not too far from there and so he came back down with his tractor and he was able to pull us out you know but it was we weren't getting out by ourselves we we were stuck we needed help to get out so we never did that again <laughs> but have you ever been stuck Maybe not in a vehicle, but have you ever felt stuck in life? I think of uh, all of those high school students still dragging up and down the main strips of their hometown well after their senior year. They're stuck. Can you think of some of those that you know? I remember a couple years after I had been in the military in the Air Force and, and I came back to visit. Uh, I had, it's been a long time since I've been to Warland and uh, my best friend Chris was there visiting his mom so I decided to swing through and at that time mom and dad were living in uh, Cody. So I just decided to swing through say hi to Chris and uh, just kind of see what was happening in Warland. You know, I'd be gone two years. And I remember seeing some of those very popular kids that you would have thought, man, we're going to go on and do amazing things. We're dragging up and down the strip in Warland. They didn't go do anything. They were stuck. They were stuck in a spot in life. And I don't know how they got there, but, but it was obvious they were stuck. And they needed somebody to help them. Get out of it. <clears throat> so have you ever felt stuck in life? Well, this story's for you. The story's for us. So verse 20 of chapter 21 in John, verses 15 through 17. Now, I want us to catch up a little bit. And I, we don't need to read it because it's a little bit lengthy there. But we're coming out of the time where Peter and some of the disciples decided to go back to what they knew was comfortable to them, and that was fishing. <clears throat> Peter says, I'm going fishing. Who wants to go with me? And they set out onto the Lake of Galilee. And it was there that they had a night of unproductive fishing. They were stuck in their old ways. And they were coming to shore, and as you remember the story, Jesus is on the shoreline. He has a fire built for them. And, and he asked them just a simple question, how was the fishing? And they're like, ah, it wasn't very good. And then he just simply says, very rem reminiscent of how they were called. Well, throw your net on the other side of the boats. And then it dawned on them who he was. Peter was so excited that, you know, it, the scripture tells us that he, that he put on his clothes and he jumped out and swam the distance to Jesus, not even waiting for the boat to come in. But he's so excited to see Jesus. To be with Jesus. And then in verse 12 there, Jesus said to them, Come, come and have breakfast. We talked about how Jesus loves to go to that intimate moment with us. Breakfast is one of those intimate moments. Just as we saw on the road to Emmaus with the disciples there, it was in that intimate moment of Jesus breaking the bread with them that their eyes were open, right? Well, again, Jesus is just really intimate with his disciples. Come, let's have breakfast together. I have it cooked here for you. 
And then this is the conversation. This is the moment where Jesus helps Peter to get unstuck. I hope this helps. Helps us. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, I want to stop there because it's interesting that Jesus is using his original name, not the name that Jesus changed it to. Why do you think that is? You know, there's some speculation, but I think Jesus was just getting down to where Peter was. You're stuck in your old ways. You're stuck, and I need to help you. So I'm going to call you by your old name first. Do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Jesus said to him, Tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Jesus, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. All right, let's back up a little bit here. Because I think there's a couple important things that we need to grab a hold of as Jesus is restoring Peter. One, we know that Peter denied Jesus three times. And we know that here there's a restoration and, it, and it's all wrapped together that he, he's asking Jesus, uh, Peter three times and that's all connected together. But there's, a, there's a kind of a, a, an interesting <coughs> nuance here that John is helping us with. There's a guidance, there's a, a road map here that we can, we can grab a hold of that Jesus is helping Peter see. See, there's a progression from lambs to sheep. Then there's a progression, progression of, of not just the, the sheep being shepherd, but also tending the sheep. That's all good and well, but we don't have sheep. See, I'm, I'm a firm believer that to get unstuck, we need to follow a plan. And our plan is here. Our plan is with Jesus Christ. So if we find ourselves stuck, we need to go to Jesus and we need to say, What's the plan and how do we get unstuck? <clears throat> well, here is Peter's plan. And I think it helps us. The lambs, as we know, lambs are very small. They're weak. They're, they're, they're very vulnerable. And I think of our community and, and how vulnerable those that don't know Christ are. We were talking about in, in Sunday school how, how, how the devil has, has such a, a dominion over death and, and, and destruction. But that when Christ came, he, he broke that. But yet those that don't know Christ are still very vulnerable to that. Are they not? Jesus is saying, look, if you love me, you're going to be focused on those that are vulnerable that are coming to me. The lambs, if you will. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they put it like this. Go out and make disciples of all the nations. 
Go and be a witness to those that don't know me. The focus is that, that hey, there are those that are just going to come to know me and we need to be mindful of them. They're the lambs within us. Not just small children, but even adults can be that small lamb. <clears throat> and it is our job to tend to them, to not forget about them, to not marginalize them in the church and hope that one day all oh, they'll grow up and, and then they'll be a big part of what's going on. No, we need to be mindful of them around us and tend to their needs to help them. Because they will become sheep. And it is there that we will again feed and tend the sheep. As we know, we have to grow. Discipleship is all about that. Growing in Christ. So from lambs to sheep. But yet sheep need a constant tending. They're not always so smart. We need a direction. We need to be tended. And Jesus helps us with that. Because he's saying, Peter, if you love me, if you really are going to keep your focus on me, these are the things that you're going to be involved in. And we know and we have the privilege of looking back into Scripture and history, and we know Peter was a rock. That's his name. We know just how far he would go in doing the tending and feeding of the sheep to death is where it would take him. But how about us? When we get stuck in our spiritual lives, do we just mull over the same thing and go back to our, our comfort zones? Or do we cry out and say, Lord, you know I love you. Help me. Give me direction and hope. As Christ brings wholeness to our lives, we will always have a direction with Him. Always. And it's the same with our church together. As we come together and are more complete as God brings people to us. We are 37 last Sunday. What a blessing that was. As we move forward and, and as we find those directions that God wants us to move in. The wholeness, the completeness will take shape till one day we are with Him and the completeness will be done in glory. But for now, there are times where we're going to need to cry out, Lord help us. Acknowledge that we love Him, but boy, we don't have all the direction. So the next 50 days, I believe God has opened a door for a future that we've been talking about. Prayer is, are we going to walk through? Or are we going to be stuck? It's a good question. I know there's a lot of fear. We're not very big. We don't necessarily have all the finances. But I don't know if that's what God's worried about. <laughs> God's worried about us being stuck and not following Him. He's going to do the same as we follow Him. Let's pray.